Guys, I have breaking big news. You haven't heard this yet, for sure. And I know that a lot of you don't like good news stories, but I'm sorry, this video has a lot of them in it, so you may as well get used to it. But let's start with the best of all, Anthony rejoining Smosh. I know. I know. How could he be back? His relationship with Ian was beyond repair and there was no way that they could come back and reignite that best friend brand of comedy that we all grew up with and loved. Well, let that be a lesson to the naysayers. No matter how bad something is, with a bit of hard work and the right people in the right places, you too can always get back to almost your former glory. Good theme for this video actually because you know what else is seemingly beyond repair? the sheer volume of petroleum-based synthetic plastic that is slowly choking out the life and beauty of the world's oceans. That's what this video is mostly about. But at least Australia will now be doing their bit after an announcement from our Environment Minister Tanya Plibersek on plastic reform that seems to have been completely glossed over by the press, just like Smosh was. No one had the guts to talk about it except us, did they? Evil prevails when good men do nothing. You know who I thought was a good man until now? Howard Stern, where was his hard questioning? So a food battle comes out, takes the world by storm. I gotta ask though, have you guys double teamed that donut or what's going on there? Don't ask them that. Anyway, back to the plastic announcement, along with a slew of other environmental policies that are trickling out as a result of having wall to wall red across this great country of ours, except for that little island that we don't really want anyway. No, I'm just kidding, Tasmania. We love your landscapes, just not your people. Yep. Still got a way to go in terms of environmental policy in Australia, but let's take a look at the real, tangible progress that is being made, finally. Because, with all these reforms, Australia just might have enough food security far into the future to make sure that we can supply a smosh food battle for 2049. You may have killed me in GMO food battle of 2048, but this year my nuclear waste soup is gonna eat your stomach lining for breakfast. Yeah? Well, I've still got the same donut! Bring it on, Cyber Gooch! Yes, the smosh we all grew up with. Still got it, fellas. No, but seriously, I've never actually watched a single smosh sketch in my life, so I don't know if that was accurate or not. Now, on the 9th of June, Federal Environment Minister Tanya P met with all the state environment ministers for a communique to discuss their plan for the environment for 2023. That must have been really awkward for the Tasmanian Environment Minister, a room full of Labor ministers, and he's just there. So, uh, my name's uh, Roger Gentry, as you can see from my name badge here, and uh, you're just all having a chat amongst yourselves. No, no, that's all right, I'll just, uh, just uh, have a look at my phone, and no, no new messages that would explain why I didn't hear the sound. At this meeting of the minds, which probably looks something like what Redditors imagine their discussion threads would look like in real life, it was led by Flibersec, they agreed upon a bunch of key issues that are getting me pretty damn hard. The first one, and I know this one sounds really boring, but I promise it'll be like that microscopic little pipette drop of skim milk that your mum puts in her tea. It just makes all the difference. That is, New legislation to come in later this year that will mandate stringent new rules for packaging, effectively mandating compulsory, not voluntary, compulsory guidelines for corporations that force them to take actual responsibility for reducing, reusing and recycling their plastic packaging. The key with this new policy is that corporations will actually have to do it. For the last 10 years, plastic regulations have been purely voluntary. And if there's anyone you can trust to volunteer to do the right thing, it's definitely Coca-Cola. So the fact that these laws are gonna be binding now is mad, especially when anything would be better than what the Liberals wanted to do, which was just burning plastic. The 50 solution to waste management, just chuck it out in a street bonfire, let it light. They decided old plastic would make a good fuel source. If you've ever been around a DT class, you'd know from the drop kick in it, Burning plastic ain't clean. Check this video out that I've already done on the topic as I really do need to emphasize this point. Climate change is clearly a hoax. Yep, that's my sincere belief. Please clip that. Yet it gets all the attention when it comes to the environment. Whereas plastics and pesticides, I honestly think they're more of an immediate threat. So it's great to see Labor mandating big reductions in single-use plastics from companies like Coke and even worse, LA Ice. Imagine being trapped in the ground for millions of years just to store that. That's right, folks. <laughs> Toxic chemicals. They're banning LA Ice. <laughs> you know, like how with cigarettes, there was worse things in them than tobacco, and so the government stepped in and banned them, which is why they taste like shit now, frankly. And you really should go and get those ones imported from Indonesia from any tobacconist that looks like this. Yeah. 
you know he damn. Would you like some LA ice with your cigarettes? Those reforms are going to cover a million tons of plastic going into the market annually. Some other stuff they talked about in this meeting included reaffirming their commitment to protecting 30% of Australian land under law, up from 22%, which again, f***ing awesome. That's almost the size of Western Australia, which is, by the way, the second largest state in the world. I don't know what the biggest is. Probably Clive Palmer's ass. Hey! I still can't believe he claimed that that was defamatory. It's not that big! It is huge though, isn't it? Increasing protected land in Australia by about a third in under seven years, we're on the right track to meeting our commitments under the newly adopted global biodiversity framework. God, isn't it great to have a government that actually jumps on board to these global environmental agreements without embarrassing us in front of all the cool countries. Remember ScoMo at COP26 in Glasgow? It's exactly like you'd imagine the Tasmanian Environment Minister, but on a world stage, oil and water, a cosplayer in a room full of NRL players on a mad Monday. Sweet. My time to shine. They're talking about knife and... Oh, it's just a new cap on knife. The Environment Minister meeting also saw them talk about fast-tracking high-priority renewables projects, as well as ramping up the fight on ferals. And no, I'm not talking about increasing security around Dapto Station. I'm obviously talking about the 90s puppet show. Honestly, wouldn't mind if they shot Medigliana in the eye. Stuck up c***. Sort of what they are doing though, they're cracking down on feral cats which kill an estimated 3 billion animals a year. And, good news out of Queensland as Anastasia Palaszczuk announces some big things for renewables in the Texas of Australia. She's recently announced the Queensland Energy and Jobs Plan. Now that's marketing. You're not going to get away with calling it the Green New Deal up in the QLD. Imagine trying to convince this guy that he should work on a wind farm or as they're known up in North Queensland, Joy Boy Cuck Lade Factory. They know they'd be in the shit if they called it what it really is, which is a plan to have Queensland be 80% renewable by 2035. So they had to do the American Democrats thing, which is just anytime they need some basic human need passed through the Senate, they have to call it something like the Bald Eagle Anti-Chinese Davy Crockett Freedom Factory. Fast Track Act. Uh, point of order, what does this Freedom Fast Track Act actually do? It's the standard operating budget for the post office. So anyway, Queensland Labor's basically committing $62 billion to transform their energy grid to 80% renewable. And they can actually do that seamlessly because their state still owns most of its grid. Renewables made up just 7% of the power grid. Palaszczuk's tripled that. It's up to 24% today. It'll be at 70% in under nine years and 80 in 12. That is a huge achievement. And in doing so, they are also making sure that people keep their jobs. So there you go. There's some good news. There's a lot to look forward to with Australia under the iron grip of the commies until Queensland probably f***s it up next election. It's obviously nowhere near as titillating as the smosh getting back to get a news, but it's a start. Like and subscribe, come see my live show. I've also got a second channel that if you didn't know, I do a live show in Sydney every Monday, so make sure that you come see that. But most importantly of all, SHUT UP! Smosh reference, haven't done that yet this video.